Today we're diving into the JIN framework in Go, showing you how to dynamically render JSON and HTML in response to a single request. Whether you're building an API or a web application, this trick will make your server more versatile and responsive to different client needs. In web development, it's common to need different response formats depending on the client's request. Some may need data in JSON format for APIs, while others might require HTML for web browsers. Handling both in a single endpoint can streamline your application and reduce the need for duplicate routes. Here we have a simple JIN app. This app displays a bunch of blogs in a paginated view. This view is paginated. We covered pagination in episode 9. By clicking on a blog, we land on the blog show page. This app serves HTML pages. We will make changes in the code to make the same root server JSON also. Let's look at the code. Here is the main function. These are the APIs we have implemented. Let's look at the handler functions. In both these functions, we serve HTML. While making the request, we need to send a parameter, say format. This parameter can be HTML or JSON. Later in the video, we will use extensions like .json or .html to serve the appropriate format. Stay tuned. In the handler, let's read the parameter, format in a variable. We will use context query method. Now put a switch statement on the format. The first case is HTML. Move the HTML renderer within this case. The other case is when the format is JSON. Let's create a JSON renderer here. Let's check if this works. Passing JSON works, the response is a JSON. Similarly, passing HTML works too. Let's remove the parameter format. And it does not work. We need to have a default renderer, which is HTML. Let's change the query method to default query. It takes the URI's argument and the default value. We pass HTML as the default value. Restart the server. Now, it renders HTML when the format is not passed. Having this logic in all routes is a pain. So let's move this logic to a separate function. Create a new file utils.go. Create a new data type called response format, which is of type integer.
we will create constants for different formats. The first one is no format. This signifies the format is not specified. The other two formats are JSON and HTML. Now create a hash map to map the format passed in the API to these constants. The map will have a string as a key and response format as the value. JSON string is mapped to format JSON. We do the same for HTML. Now we will create a function, say, getFormat. We will use this function in the controllers to detect the format sent in the API. It accepts JIN context and returns response format. Here we will read the URI parameter format with the default value HTML as we did in the handler function. If there is no match of the format in the hash map, it will return zero, which is no format. This is similar to our default format case, so let's return HTML format. Else, we return what the hash map returns. Here we are reading the hash map twice, so let's read it once and put the value in a variable, detected format. Now make use of this variable. Well, there is more cleanup possible. In case there is no format detected, we send HTML. What if we make the value of constant called format HTML zero? This will remove the if else in this function. Let's change the value of format HTML to zero. Now this function is really simple. Let's make use of this function in the handlers. Change the switch case statement accordingly. Now, use the same format detections and render the requested format in the other handler function too. Restart the server.
Now let's try the individual blog show API. It works in all cases. It would be great if we could add an extension in the API like .html or .json and it renders the format based on this extension. We can add arguments to the APIs. Let's add .format to these APIs. Restart the server. We see an issue here with the second API. Since Jin does not support regular expression in the APIs, we cannot use two parameters next to each other. Then what is the solution? Nginx comes to the rescue. We can use it as a reverse proxy. Let's see how we can use it to detect format using the extension in the API. I already have Nginx installed and have put configurations in place. In the Sites Available directory, I created a new configuration called GinBlogs. Let's see what is there in this file. This is the server block. These directives tell Nginx to listen for incoming connections on port 90, for both IPv4 and IPv6 addresses respectively. This block matches all requests and contains the rules for processing them. This condition checks if the requested URI ends with .html or .json. The API endpoint or file name without the extension in the first part is assigned to variable API. The extension part is assigned to variable extension. This directive rewrites the original request URI by removing the extension. Here this is replaced with slash API. API is the endpoint we fetched earlier. This adds a custom HTTP header X original extension to the proxy request containing the original extension, either HTML or JSON. This header can be used by our server to determine the requested response format. This directive forwards the modified request to the back-end server running on localhost port 8080. Once the configuration is in place, we make a symlink of it in Sites Enabled directory for Nginx to consider it. This fails because we already have this symlink. Restart Nginx service. Now, let's read this header we have added in Nginx in our code. In this function, let's read the format from the header using getHeader function. We need to set the default format to HTML. If the format is blank, set HTML as the format. Restart the server. Let's try the APIs. Oops, we need to use engine export, which is 90. The JSON extension works. 
HTML works too. And no extension works well. And that's how you handle JSON and HTML rendering in a single request using JIN. This approach can significantly enhance your application's flexibility and user experience. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more coding tips and tricks. Happy coding!